uh, we want to thank everybody for uh, joining us today and taking uh, time out of your day to get on with us. And we, what we hope would be the first of many uh, communications with Commerce Lexington uh, and our community entrepreneurs and business leaders, our minority business leaders. Um, and we're just here to talk about a few things. And what we want to do is share our commonalities and our stories and our antidotes for what we've learned through COVID-19, the pandemic, and then of course, some of the social justice reform that's going on and what it's led to us to understand uh, about minority business and minority business spend and minority business opportunities in and around our community. So um, my name is Ray Daniels. I'm the board chair of 2020 Commerce Lexington. Uh, I own a company called Equity Solutions Group. I also own a company called Lexington Eat, uh, and I'm also on the school board. Um, and um, it's been a pleasure serving in 2020. There's been a lot of uh, challenges, but uh, I feel like uh, Commerce Lex has met them straight straight on, and we've uh, addressed it, and we tried to be a resource uh, for the community and for the business community as a whole. Uh, also on this call, uh, we have Larry Forrester, who is a senior vice president of commercial lending with Fort Bank, and uh, Larry's gonna be here to address when he talks, address a lot of things about banking, banking relationships, uh, a lot of PPP stuff, uh, so on and so forth. We have Tyrone Tyra, who's Senior Vice President of Community and Minority Business Development, who's been working very hard and has an exciting announcement that he will make on this call uh, in regards to um, our community, our um, minority business community. And we have Martina Barksdale on this as well with us, who is the uh, creative person in mind behind the sit-in blog series uh, and is account executive with LM Communications and, uh, and kind of the driver behind um, getting behind cataloging uh, a lot of uh, black restaurants and then our black businesses in the community. So thank, we thank Martina for being here. So what I want to do is if you guys have questions as we're going along, please throw it on the chat. We'll get to all the questions at the end. If you have a question for an individual, say the name. If not, we'll just answer it as a group. Um, and what I want to do to start is put everybody in the in this particular headspace. And the headspace I'm trying to get everybody in is that we have to start cataloging our lessons learned uh, through COVID-19, and which was a pandemic, which is a pandemic. And then also inside of a crisis of COVID-19, um, all of the justice reform movement and protests and Black Lives Matter and all those other things that are going on inside of this crisis. We need to catalog how do we conduct business um, when we're confronted with this crisis. And what are some of the things that we have to do to, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, bring our businesses um, out from in the shadows and bring our businesses out front and into the light. Uh, we are hearing a lot of conversation in our community and around the country, um, but here in our community especially, about minority spend dollars and how, how dollars are being spent in and around our community. So I wanted to take the time to put everybody in the headspace to talk about a couple of things that we need to do as minority businesses. We need to create partnerships. We need to catalog our businesses. Um, we need to understand the opportunities that are available um, for our businesses. Uh, we need to have voices heard from our business community on our boards and commissions. Commerce Lexington needs our minority businesses to be involved in our um, business owners advisory boards, where we talk about common things to entrepreneurship and owning a business. Um, we need to develop relationships. We need to apply for grants. We need to apply for scholarships to our leadership Lexington, which would develop further relationships with majority companies. Uh, we need to get involved in the Emerge Conference. Um, we need to understand why diversity matters, why inclusion matters in this moment in time. Um, because when it comes to figuring out where public spend comes from, the cataloging of businesses, how many businesses, who is in business, matters to the percentage of business that you get from these large entities. Um, we need to understand that our school district is a minority majority school district. Uh, and we need to understand the significance and understanding what that means. Um, we need to understand that just yesterday, the city announced um, through a new reporting mechanism they have what their minority spend dollars were. And they, they met and obtained their goal. Now, when you break the numbers down, you realize that 1% of their spend was actually minority, African-American minority business. Most of their spend were white female business. So you have to be able to break the numbers down even further. 
Uh, and you have to understand that if a disparity study gets commissioned coming out of that meeting, and we don't have the necessary things on the front end of that, our businesses won't get cataloged appropriately. And the disparity studies are made there to justify spend dollars. So well, a lot of the things that I wanted to make sure we're in the headspace of talking about is why, why, do I ha why does my business have to be certified? Why do I need to be certified as a minority business or a female-owned business or a veteran-owned business? Uh, it's, it's important for that catalogization. It, it kind of dictates how the dollars are spent, how the dollars are set aside, so to speak. So you have to certify your business. So what we want to learn through this process is we want to make sure that we can aid uh, in helping you get your businesses certified. Uh, and you got to join organizations such as Commerce Lexington who are working hard every day to make sure that we create an, um, a community where we all can be able to be involved in the spend dollars, whether it be public or private. So a lot of folks think that when you talk about public spend, you're just talking about one sector or another. You're talking about construction or you're talking about engineering. And that's, that's not necessarily the case. One of the biggest spend dollars in our community, which would be UK, uh, and the second biggest spend dollars would be Fayette County Public Schools, a lot of what we're talking about is it represents everybody's business. That's a lot of purchasing dollars. There's a lot of contracts out there where you just buy items for the school district. If you're in the food business, there are tremendous opportunities to do business with Fayette County Schools if you're in, in that line of work. Uh, we have tremendous opportunities for you to create uh, your own feeding program or be able to cater or do all types of things like that inside the school district. So it's not limited to one business. It actually impacts all of our businesses across the board. So I just wanted to make sure that we talked about that and we were in that headspace. And the final thing I will say before I let my more esteemed members of this panel jump on is from a business perspective, having owned quite a few businesses in my lifetime, uh, and then having worked at a corporate setting as a director of diversity for a company, we have to have more conversations around how to be tactical in running your business and how to be strategic. Um, now, we need to also understand in these kind of trying times with some of the stressors that we have or have had is the difference between cash flow and P&L. And I'm not trying to get in a big, deep discussion. My, my point is some of the services that are being volunteered through Commerce Lexington currently are free legal services. And those legal services can be taken advantage of to kind of get your business set up in the structure that will be beneficial to you if COVID-19 and those kind of things continue going forward. It will allow you to set your business up to take advantage of some of the funding um, that the government, the federal government especially, has put into the marketplace. So be on the lookout for, uh, for those free legal services. We are working hard on free accounting service, and that gets back to my cash flow versus P&L. P&L is a snapshot of where you are today. Cash flow is where you are tomorrow and down the road in case crisis and other things happen. And so when we establish those free accounting services and consultations, please, by all means, take advantage of that as well. Because um, you, you need to understand every component and aspect of your business if you're going to survive through any kind of crisis or stressors that happens in the economy. So. I wanted to make sure we talked about that. We're trying to get a couple of other groups to join in and, and talk about free payroll services or cons consultation on how to set your payroll up. And then we're also talking about marketing, uh, social media, and that aspect of it to kind of get, get your businesses where it needs to be uh, from that point of view. So that's enough for me. Um, we'll come back to some questions later and maybe some take-home value uh, as we wrap up at the end. And I wanted to turn it over to Larry Forrester right now to talk about banking and so on and so forth. Oh, thanks, Ray. Uh, can you hear me out there? Ray, you good? All right, great. Perfect. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, again, as Ray said, uh, my name is Larry Forster. I'm the Senior Vice President for Commercial Lending here at Fort Bank in Lexington. Uh, been in banking now for 15 years. Uh, worked with uh, portfolio size of about 80 million. Uh, and pretty much uh, small businesses has been my number one thing uh, since I moved here to Lexington. Uh, Tyrone was one of the first guys I met, actually, when I came on board. So, and he's still around. So I appreciate you, Tyrone and Ray. Um, but one of the things I want to talk about is several bullet points, but I think a lot of Q and A will help out. But uh, just during this COVID nineteen and dealing with uh, the minority businesses, um, having the access to your lender, I know that was key. 
the importance of how you convey information over to the lender um, that you have, um, and also just to helping you understand a little bit about credit character and what the bank looks for. Uh, so I just want to dovetail a little bit in those three agenda items. And again, I'm open to uh, any question that I can answer. If I cannot, I'll try to find an answer for you. Uh, the first one is accessing your lender. Um, during this process, uh, even before COVID-19 started, one of the key things that we talk about is having a good relationship with your lender. Um, some folks may not have a loan, and that's perfectly fine. But if you have a bank that you're banking with, somewhere that you're depositing your funds, uh, they need to know who you are. You need to get there, talk with them, talk with the lender, ask who the lender is that works with the small business credits, ask them for their guidance, ask for help, because in, if they're willing to help you, then you will be in a better situation uh, going forward. And what I mean by that is Ray mentioned some things about the income statement or understanding your cash flow. Well, you can bring that information into the bank, regardless of whether if you are applying for a loan or not, to see if you are credit worthy. You don't have to wait until you need that loan and then come to find out maybe you won't qualify. Um, and if the lender doesn't do it, I'll be honest with you, then you can find another lender that would do it for you. Because the name of the game is, I'm in banking. We need you more than you need us. <laughs> so I'm just going to be honest. Uh, we got to, you know, that's the thing that, you know, I live and die about because if it wasn't for the business owner, I wouldn't have a job. So we'll be more than happy to assist you with you on that. And I'm speaking from bankers as a whole. Uh, so make sure when you go into your bank or you're making deposits, um, you make yourself known. Let them know who you are. Let them know what you do. There could be opportunities right at your bank that you are not familiar with. And that can uh, provide you with good, uh, good representation, but also uh, good opportunities that uh, you may not know about. The other piece is, again, just conveying that information over. Um, you be transparent. Uh, if there's an issue that's going on, if you currently have a relationship with the lender, you have a loan, let them know on the front end, because a lot of times we can help you early on, but if you wait to the last minute, sometimes you'll be put yourself in a predicament where you cannot. But that's where the relationship piece comes into play. If you do not have a relationship and something happens, then it's less likely you will be helped. Uh, again, we're in business because you're in business. If you're not in business, we're not. So we, we want to make sure that you're satisfied and that's in banking in general. Uh, there's things that we can and cannot do, but if you keep that line of communication open, I mean, one of the things I said in a call yesterday was, you know, ask your lender for coffee sometime. I mean, ask them to lunch or breakfast. They'll be happy to go out with you. Uh, ask them to come check out your business establishment. Uh, I mean, those things are just as important as your business as it is for the majority of business. Because a business is a business. You got revenues and expenses and net income. It, at the end of the day, that's what happens. So uh, don't set yourself up to failure. Be open, be transparent, you know, get into your bank. And again, if your bank or your banker is not willing to help you, then there's a lot of banks in Fayette County or in the surrounding uh, Central Kentucky there's a lot of that people will be willing to help you. And that's the truth. Um, one thing I Ray did touch on was the cash flow statement. And I just want to make this small snit pick on that is uh, cash flow is highly important. Ray is uh, exactly right. Uh, one of the other things that's important is liquidity right now. Uh, having cash on hand can get you through some tough times. So my recommendation would be if you have or you have the ability to save more than you can, do it. Because as Ray mentioned, if we have another situation like COVID-19 or it gets worse, you want to try your best to put some money away for that rainy day. Um, I just, I've been with several businesses that were able to, to do that, whether they were the majority or the minority, and uh, they were able to kind of weather the storm a little better because they had the cash on hand to do what they need to do. And that's when the PPP came into play which really helped them out. So they was able to still hold on to their current cash position and get qualified for the small business uh, PPP loan. So now they were able to utilize those funds instead of utilizing their own internally funds. So they basically were still the same as if COVID didn't happen from a financial 
statement standpoint. Um, but always remember liquidity is uh, very, very important given the direction it seems like we're going into from this current state of environment. Um, a little bit about, you know, the PPP, I don't get too much into that because I know this it's always changing. Um, but uh, we were a, a bank that participated with PPP loans. We did somewhere between 60 and 70 million of PPP loans and about 90% of those were under 150,000. So majority of them, majority of them were small business credits. Um, you know, there's two and a half months of payroll. Right now, uh, there's still, if not from my understanding, about $100 billion left. Um, I think one of the issues is there's a lot of banks that have stopped uh, lending in that capacity, but there are still some banks that are currently lending um, if there's a need. I have been told yesterday there's about four banks in town uh, that are currently lending, so their opportunities are still open. And again, if your bank is not doing it, you know, if you're needing that funding uh, for the first time, because you can only get it once. I know there's been several questions. You can come back and get it again, but uh, you can only uh, qualify one time and get funding once. You can uh, look at uh, one of those four banks, and I can get those banks to you and, and get it out as an email uh, after the session. Um, also, be aware of your documentation. Um, awareness of documentation is highly important. Uh, when you involve, regardless if you're looking for the PPP loan or just a loan in general from a business standpoint, you want to have your documentation in line. And again, you can help supplement that or solve that by creating that relationship with your lender early on. Or whether if it's the chamber, uh, give Tyrone a call. He can put you to the right individual or the right people to assist you there to get you in a good situation. That's the uh, key as well. Uh, having the correct documentation up front uh, will make your credit a lot better going forward. If you're piecemealing everything, it'll look like you're a little discombobulated. So take the time, get the information in. Don't ever rush about it. You know, I look at it, just try to plan it out. You never can plan for an emergency like we just had with COVID, but you can, all, you can build relationships prior to COVID. And now we know what happens. You can start building that relationship with your, with your banker. Um, just, uh, I think Tyrone's going to talk a little bit about some other funding sources, so I won't touch on that. Uh, I would say this, uh, you know, from an SBA standpoint, uh, there's still good programs that are out there right now. Uh, SBA is currently, they have a program called the SBA Express Program, which is underneath the 7A. Uh, they have increased their limit to a million dollars, and you can get a guarantee up to 100% for the banks. So, um, it takes a lot of risk out of those deals. And we have, uh, myself, I closed one last week and uh, it's been fairly, you know, fairly easy. Two or three documents you signed, actually two documents. Um, not all banks are not participating in that, but the reason I'm saying that is in this time, really look at your current financial position. There may be an opportunity to not borrow new money, but consolidate your existing debts and get your payments down lower so you can increase your cash flow. Because if you look at it, our rates now are down to the lowest it's been since 2008. Um, and if you've been borrowing money in the last two or three years, or borrowed money in the last two or three years, your rates were more probably in the five, six ranges or whatever. And now they're in the low four, some in the mid threes. So a debt consolidation could be a good idea. That way you're not taking on any new credit but you're consolidating your old credit to help you out financially and keep your monthly payments down and you're building your cash flow. And you you got a set amount of time now, you know where you're paying these things off. Just the key to that is you just got to make sure you're saving yourself about 20% of monthly payments. So those are some things that I want to point out to everyone. I can talk for a long time about this, but. Well, Larry, I actually, I actually got some questions for you. So I appreciate that. But Go ahead. Let me let me fire out a couple questions for you. So you. simply put, if you got a bad banking relationship where you can't pick up the phone and talk to your banker on any given Sunday, any day of the week, are you at the right bank? No. Uh, let's be clear on that. Um, and if you need guidance from us on community banks, um, we have guidance on that, on um, community banks. And uh, go ahead, Tyrone, you wanted to weigh in on that? No, no. no okay. 
But uh, yeah, if you need guidance on community banks or nonprofit banks, uh, there, there, there's quite an array of that. And there's quite a few banks that Commerce Lexington is uh, affiliated with. And Tyrone will talk about our accelerator program, but we have quite a few banks that if you have a, if you don't have a banking relationship that's reliable, trustworthy, that you can discuss and talk to your banker about all of the above, then you, you need to move your assets to a bank that appreciates uh, you a little bit better than that. I will just leave it there. Uh, there are, to me, I'm going to ask you, Larry, there's a couple of things that you got to, you got to keep in a document file at all times that you can click and send over to a bank or any financial institution. You need yep. a personal financial statement updated on a yearly basis that you should have updated every year. And, and what are the two other documents, Larry, you mentioned one. Yeah. Well, having a file and ready to go at all times. Yeah. I would, I would actually do the PFS uh, twice a year. Yeah. Uh, maybe January or you can do June, December, June, January. Um, the other one, Ray, would be income statement and your balance sheet. Um, and depending on the business itself, you know, if the business has uh, ARs, you want to have accounts receivable aging report so you can see where you are. There's a lot of businesses that are on a cruel basis where they have products or services that they already performed or let out, but their money hasn't come in yet but they're showing it as if it actually has, but they haven't been paid for 60, 90 days. Well, that's money that's out there left on the table and that's cash flow to help operate. So um, yeah, you okay. definitely want to pay attention to, to those and things. The first, the first page of your tax return, correct? Yeah, you need your tax return. But right. I wouldn't have that. I mean, in the file, you usually will have that on most accountants now are providing that via email. So I would think that would be an easy click. But your okay. financial statements is something you can look at like you mentioned, point in time to see where you are. And then you can start looking at a trend analysis over the last year and break it down in each month. Because some folks, the businesses are seasonal and you can see where you're either going up, you're going down or you're staying steady. Now, should you, should you do all your banking at one bank? In other words, should I have my loan from a bank, my depositories at another bank and my personal banking at another bank? You know, it all depends on how much services you're getting and what's, meeting that service. Typically, if the bank is really good and true to you, they're going to want to maintain their full relationship and you can actually leverage some of that relationship to help better yourself. So, you know, I, I think that's kind of a bigger, broader question, but that's, you, that might not, no, that's the word you use. You leverage, um, depositories yeah. matter still in this day and age, you have to leverage all aspects of your banking. Um, yeah. and I guess in, in the overall theme of what we wanted Larry to talk about and hit it right on home with, you are the customer and you demand the relationship. Uh, you know, your banker should be notifying you on all things business and personal related uh, that the bank is offering at any given moment. Um, and, you know, you can go to a bank early, even if you know you're not prepared or qualified and they can give you the debt ratio number of when we'll come back and have this conversation. And I've done that before. And you can go and say, okay, when I get these ratios in the, in, in the proper fields, then I know I'll qualify for this extension or this loan or this line of credit or whatever you're trying to work on. And that's the kind of relationship you need to have with your banker. So I, I suggest that everybody inventory where they're at with their bank. Uh, banks are very competitive in this town and they're only not competitive if you don't shop them. And if you don't shop, they're not competitive. Larry, we did have a question on the chat um, okay. in regards to something. Let me read it out real quick. All right. see if you can nail this out before we go to Martina. Uh, person says they were approved for an EIDL loan. The closing documents say the borrower will obtain and itemize receipts, paid receipts, paid invoices, canceled checks, and contracts for loan funds spent. Retain these receipts for three years following the final disbursement. Um, the question they have is, are these EIDL dollars restricted use funds or can it be used for any business expense? And can you utilize some of the funds to pay off credit card balances prior to receiving the loan? And do the receipts need to be presented upon request? Are they required or submitted periodically? How does this receipt process work? All right, well, the EIDL loans um, actually are funded directly through SBA, from SBA. So you will wanna contact the local SBA's office in Louisville. Um, Cause I've actually had that question similar question asked of me as well and not to step my toes into what SBA is doing 
I directed them back to Louisville, uh, which is uh, Dana and Winston um, in the Louisville office for SBA because the EIDL loan, there's been, I guess, changes over time. And I was told you could use it for, uh, for payroll and other expenses, but it would be restricted. And they do have that three-year period to come back and vet that. So I would make sure you get documentation from SBA to get some clarity on that. I wouldn't be the best one to answer that because the banks are not the one that administer those loans. Right. So I, I don't know who asked that question, but one thing that you can use to document all your receipts so you don't have them all jumbled up, this, that, and the other, definitely go to the, you know, go to the app store. There's a lot of good scan apps out there that file all your stuff away, but there's a, there's a great accounting app called bill.com. Uh, and they they can provide all kinds of reports and access to everything that you enter and scan through bill.com. Uh, that's a, a, a low, it's very, very inexpensive, uh, but it can kind of, it can keep your, all your receipts in all the files that you want to keep them in, especially just for uh, PPP and EIDL money. Um, so good. Any other questions uh, pertaining to that, please throw them on the chat. Um, so we want to jump over to Martina. Are you ready for what you got going on today? Yes, I am ready. So um, for all of you all who don't know, I am the creator and founder of The Sit-In. The Sit-In is a platform for marginalized community, specifically uh, Black people in highlighting um, their successes and their talents. And um, most recently, I created the Lexington Black Business Guide. Um, and it was a, it's a list of Black businesses uh, currently in Lexington, and it links directly to their website and or social media pages. And I know we are going over a lot of the business structures and financials, but uh, what I can contribute to the conversation is within branding and marketing. And I have a quick um, five minute presentation, I believe. Uh, Katie, do you, can you share the screen, please? So I wanna, this is a very brief over, overview of branding and marketing, nothing super um, in depth, but I do believe that's important for businesses in general. So um, free game and to invest in your marketing, a brief overview of why your marketing and branding is important. Um, Katie, you can scroll to the next slide, please. So um, with branding, why is your brand important? So your brand is your story and your story will help you sell your product and or service. People like to buy into the brand, not just the product. Um, a lot of times when we are buying products or services, you're really buying into the person or the story behind it um, and not just that. Uh, but it's very important to be clear in your brand. Who are you? Why are you here? And what are you offering? Answering those who, why, and what questions um, can help clarify and give clarity to your brand. Um, next. So when we're discussing branding in general, your logo matters. Um, I think everyone should invest in a professional logo, logo um, and your logo should be simple. Uh, what I mean by simple, you don't want to have too many colors. You want it to be have a standalone image, just like in McDonald's. It doesn't have to say McDonald's to know when you see those golden arches that that belongs to McDonald's. Uh, another reason why you want your brand, um, your logo to be very simple, you want it to be easy to transfer to other marketing materials uh, because when it's too busy, the cost goes up. If you have too many colors, the cost goes up as well um, when trying to transfer that on other marketing materials. And the simpler the logo, um, the more it, e it is easy to read and for people to understand. And when we're talking about branding and logo, a lot of businesses I don't see have a, a style guide. You want consistency and cohesion in your branding overall. So what a style guide is, it's a holistic set of standards that defines the business brand, includes linguistics, tone, logo, colors, visuals, vernacular, and more. Um, so a style guide would essentially be, these are the colors that we use, this is the font that we use, and these are the type of 
the type of vernacular and wording we use just so you can have cohesion, especially across um, a lot of your platforms, particularly on social media. And I also want to extend that to your at name. So if you have a particular at name on Facebook, you want the same exact at name on Twitter, the same exact at name on Instagram. It makes people it makes it easier for people to find you. And like I said, that cohesion so people don't get confused. If you have two different logos on two of your different um, platforms on social media, that is confusing to the consumer. So we, people eat with their eyes before they eat with their stomach. And the next slide, please. So wait, I need a marketing budget. So let's, this, we've been talking about marketing and branding, so I just want to define it real quick. So marketing is the action or business of promoting and selling products or services, including market research and advertising. When it comes to marketing, it's important, I cannot stress this enough, to do your research. Um, a lot of times Google Analytics makes that super easy nowadays. And even with your social media, when you have a business profile, they run a lot of the numbers for you. So you can see um, what demographic your following is under and how frequent they're viewing your um, your profile and things like that. So marketing is important because you can have a great product, you can have a great business structure and a great story, but if people don't know you exist, then how can you increase your revenue and raise your brand profile? I see this a lot of times with business in Lexington, um, especially the older businesses that have been around and you know they have great food or they have a great service, but a lot of people in order to grow their business don't know they exist. So it's important to get your name out there. Um, when talking about marketing budget and ROI, your return on investment is important. So your budget should be based on your ideal ROI. So to run your ROI in marketing terms, you want to do your sales growth minus your marketing costs and divide that by the marketing costs. And that is your return on investment. Um, a lot of people want to know what is considered a good ROI. It, differs based on your industry so it's important for you all to do your own research so you understand what dollars to invest in order to see a good roi um, some important things to note is that marketing is a long-term multiple reach process your campaigns will need to run for a healthy amount of time to achieve growth Frequency and consistency is very important in marketing. You can't expect to run even a Facebook campaign for a month and expect your business to surge. Um, it's super important that you understand that you can't just market on radio or you can't just market on social media. Um, I believe in it being a multiple reach process. And like I said, frequency and, and consistency is important and to not expect a quick return. I um, had a client that paid an Instagram influencer about a thousand dollars to post their product. Um, they saw a, a surge in sales for just that day, but otherwise they didn't see it for the continue of the month because that was just one post. So if you're going to spend money, make sure that money is going to be on a monthly basis um, in order to achieve that growth. It's, it's not enough to just spend $10 to boost the post and that's it. Um, so it's important to really look at your financials and see what you can invest in and see what's going to get you the, the best return on investment. And when we talk about marketing and research, your target audience is very, very important. Like I said, do your research. So be specific in who you serve and the demographic you desire, because serving everyone serves no one. I know we all have businesses like this could be for everybody, but that's not true. Focus on your key demographic, focus on your desired client, and do your research behind that. Next slide, please. Um, and then I just have a list of vehicles to engage your target audience. Um, one being a website, two is social media. Um, and with social media, you wanna have sponsored and or boosted posts. You wanna be consistent in your content, and because that drives engagement. So if you are posting once every three months, not a lot of people are gonna see it. Post as often as possible. I understand posting is hard. and It's a full-time job for a reason, but it's important to be consistent so people can con consistently see that you're out there. Um, some other vehicles, radio, digital, which in digital, that is a, a whole conversation in itself because I don't wanna get too far into the weeds, but you have 
everything from pay-per-click, geofencing, retargeting, OTT, which is over the top video, and different apps, um, television, print, which can include magazines and articles, or even being featured on a blog. Um, don't be afraid to reach out to influencers, uh, especially in the Lexington community, because a lot of where we get our suggestions are from them. Um, also networking, networking is very important so people know that you're out there. Don't be afraid to go to any networking events and exchange business cards and get your name out there. Guerrilla marketing is still number one marketing in my eyes. Um, organization membership, join, join, be a member of a lot of these key organizations, just like Commerce of Lexington, um, in a minority space, maybe Urban League, um, things like that. Even with the Kentucky Black Bourbon Guild um, that I'm a part of, I've gotten a lot more engagement and business contacts through just being a member of key organizations here in Lexington. And referrals are always good. If you can refer somebody, somebody will always refer you. Um, and then with your marketing materials, business cards, flyers, posters, et cetera, are very, are, are key things that you can use to target your audience. I put a star next to website and social media because this day and age, it is very important. In order to even be listed on my site um, for the Lexington Black Business Guide, you have to have a link to the your website or social media. That's how people find you. They're gonna Google you before they call you up. So it's not enough just to have a phone number and have a registered business. Make a quick Facebook account, put your information on there and have that link until you're able to afford or able to set up a website. All right, we can go to the next one. So I wanted to go on some affordable and um, free software to use. Um, I understand that not a lot of businesses have allocated a marketing budget or they're just not in the position to hire someone full time. But some things that you can play around with um, are some social media and marketing templates such as Canva and Adobe Spark. They are free, but you can upgrade and pay, I think around, I think I paid $20 a month for Canva Pro and Adobe Spark, um, just if you're not advanced in Adobe Photoshop and Illustrator. But I created this on Canva. Um, it's a, a great way to get a professional look. They have pre-made templates. Um, you can change the colors, change everything around. And it's it's great to use on social media as well so you can get content out there. Um, uh, some good website builders um, that are super user friendly, that even if you're not um, well versed in that, I do suggest hiring outside if this is not your forte. But just to get started, um, Wix is my number one. I, I love it because it has different apps you can use as far as um, creating like online accounts for shopping and things like that. Um, WordPress is a, a great one, especially for blogging and any publication. GoDaddy and Square. And a lot of these, um, they run their own, um, they run their own statements and things. So you're able to track your engagement, you're able to track your spending, and they can direct, um, link to your bank accounts directly. So if you're making any purchases or anything through, through the site, um, from an e-commerce perspective, you're able to track that. And you can connect a lot of these to QuickBooks as well. Um, and from an email marketing standpoint, MailChimp is free. So it's constant contact to create. And then obviously you can pay to upgrade. Email marketing um, is just another form and tool to target your audience. I do believe in getting, collecting people's information um, so you can directly reach out to them, having a subscription to your site, um, sending out updates about your brand uh, is, a, is a great way to interact with your target audience that sometimes is outside of just the particular product. And next slide, please. So tying this another way to get your business out, if you are a black owned business um, and you want to be added to the Lexington Black Business Guide, you can go to my website, thesitinproductions.com, go to the collaborate page and complete the forum. I cannot stress this enough, you must provide a link to your social media and or website to be listed. Um, my traffic is going up every single day since creating this list and it's a great way for your business to get noticed 
for free. Um, and then I've had, I did the 19 days of Black Biz Challenge. And a lot of people have seen an increase just with me posting about that in their business and increasing their customer base. So it's a quick overall branding and marketing and why it's important to your business. And that's it. We could go in depth all day about it, but I just wanted to give an overview of why it's important. No, thanks, Martina. Um, we appreciate you um, highlighting all the things that you highlighted um, and bringing black businesses to the forefront and putting that list together. Uh, I encourage folks to go to your site and make sure that they uh, go ahead and join uh, and make sure you have uh, you have a website or some 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 sort of way that people can reach you and communicate with you. So we do appreciate your efforts. We're going to come back to you with a couple of questions at the end that we have. Uh, but I want to Tyrone to jump in real quick and, and uh, get going on his presentation. Sure. And, uh, and mine is more a uh, compilation. Uh, good morning, everyone. Mine is more of a compilation of what everybody, everybody has uh, spoken about so far. Uh, you know, the biggest thing for me that, uh, that I preach is that um, one thing, you have a resource with Commerce Lexington. For about 25 years, Commerce Lexington has been one of the few agencies that has a minority business development uh, actual area focus, part of the economic development focus of Lexington and part of our strategic plan. And so we are, we are there with a help from a lot of, with help from a lot of other people, a lot of the entities, uh, large companies, small companies, banks that are around, um, that are around central Kentucky that, uh, that are there to assist you. And anything that, that we talk about when it comes to uh, minority businesses is going to be directed at ethnic minority businesses. I will tell you that the 15, almost 15 years that I've been in Commerce Lexington, I get calls from all over the country, people asking us, how do you do that? You know, how do you uh, put that together? And what we say is that, you know, Lexington is a big, small town, and uh, we put a lot of coalitions together, um, beginning with our access loan program that has loaned almost $23 million um, in, uh, in its time directed at small business. Uh, we have a minority business accelerator program that last year had uh, its best year with uh, about $8.2 million uh, that we had with a, uh, that was um, through our consultant and uh, through very capable businesses um, that those businesses got new contracts for over $8 million. And those are ethnic minority companies that, um, uh, that are owned and are putting dollars back into the Lexington community. Um, I can't stress enough some of the things that have uh, print, uh, been presented. The number one thing, I'm so glad that uh, Martina, a young person, uh, said networking. Please, I think one of the biggest things that, uh, that you can look at in, uh, here in town is taking advantage of free and professional services and getting your name and your face out there. Um, so many people... Uh, will will say to me, oh man, I got to go to that event. I got to do this. I got to do that. Yes, you do. Yes, you do need to get out there. You need to be to be in the forefront of what's going on because, like like Martina said, people buy with their eyes before they. I mean, people eat with their eyes before they eat with their mouth. You know, because they want they want to know. A lot of people want to know, especially now, who they're doing business with and what's and what's going on. Um, you know, one of the, uh, the, the only good thing I could think that has come out of this crisis is that I've had people uh, email me on a daily basis saying, show me where the minority businesses are out there. I would like to support them. I didn't recognize that I was, I mean, people talking to me on the phone for 20 minutes, how I just never thought about it. You know, I need to, I need to support minority businesses as much as I can. So I think that you have to, you, know, you have to seize, you have to seize that moment and take advantage of the services. One of our partners here at Commerce Lexington is a Small Business Development Center, the Bluegrass Small Business Development Center, the right on the second floor with us. That's a free service that can help you with a lot of the things uh, that you can look at. You're already paying for that if you're a taxpayer. So you can go to the Small Business Development Center and get a business plan together, uh, put a marketing plan together, tweak it, and then take it out. And that's before you spend, um, pretty much barely spend a dollar, and, you know, you're spending your time putting that together. And that's a service that's been around forever. So I, um, I am uh, definitely an advocate. Um, I, see that, um, I see that Katie has put up the contact information uh, for that, uh, for one of the business coaches. Please take that down and uh, take a look. 
the uh, the second thing that I would that I would like to say, and I think it's um and, and it just it's equal to taking advantage of the services, is uh, certification, folks. It, certification is is there. Um, you can have uh, I've, I've had people complain about it. They wonder why, but a majority of minority businesses are not certified. So you can't even get in the door of some places. You know, Messer Construction, Valvoline, LG&E, Toyota, um, LG&E KU, I'm sorry, Toyota. Uh, Fifth Third Bank has a national uh, program. Uh, PNC Bank has a national program. Great Construction has a national program. Now I'm putting these down because these are people that we work with that have actually gotten business. You know, you have uh, Fayette County Public Schools here locally and you have Lexington Fayette Urban County Government. All of these folks want you to be certified because they want to count that spend. And, and, you know, and there's a national focus uh, on, on counting minority spend. It's been going on for years. And if you're not in that, if, you, if you're not within that um, realm, you're, out, you're, you're outside the realm of really making money. I mean, I, I'm one of the few people that'll tell you that if you really want to make some serious money, you got to look at certifying your business. There's a, there's a women's business organization and there's Tri-State Minority Supplier Development Council that certifies most of the minority businesses here in um, Central Kentucky. If they require 51% ownership, um, ethnic minority ownership, and then you go from there. Women-owned business, same thing, 51%. And you know, if it were me, of course, you know, as you can see, I am not a female, but uh, as a female, I would do both. I'd be a women-owned business certified and a certified minority business because I want my name on as many lists as possible. You know, I, I take these particular lists as opportunities. You're putting yourself in those portals and most of the portals are on, on these companies' websites. You get yourself, you set up in the portal and when they're looking for products and services, they go down that list and they call you. I mean, you know, that you're not, you're not doing anything with that but spending your time um, putting, um, uh, getting your name and your company information and your certification out there and letting people know who you are. And then once you do that, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna definitely um, take the approach of trying to meet some of those folks because these are also companies. Everybody that I mentioned so far has a lo has local representation, and you can and you can get to those people. One thing about Lexington, you can get to just about anybody um, that you want if you target it and spend and spend your time correctly. So certification um, is a, is definitely a key. I'm also glad that uh, Martina talked about and Larry talked about membership. Ray talked about membership. You've got to get within the center of uh, what's going on here uh, in the city. And I think being a part of organizations, being a part of venerable um, organizations is very, very important. Uh, being a part of fringe organizations, I don't care. As long as you get yourself out there and, um, and know what's going on, you, you, you can't be in the background when you're trying to grow uh, your opportunity. In our access loan program, the one thing that we always talk about, it, you know, when it comes to tactical and uh, being strategic, is that you, when you are being considered, when you are considered for a loan, you need to turn around and and uh, be the consumer and talk to that lender, that prospective lender. Very, very often, when people go through our program, they get multiple offers, and the, and the number one thing that I tell them is that you're creating a partnership. You know. See if you vibe with that loan officer. See if you, you know, if you can talk to them, ask them questions. Uh, there are some basic things that you look at. You know, will they take your information? And like Larry said earlier, hey, look, if they, um, if that, if that beggar doesn't jive with you, there's another one down the road. Keep walking, keep walking down those approvals. We tell people until you find somebody that's really going to work with you to march on this journey to profitability for you. That is, that is so key. And, that, and that's where you want to be. And um, you know, your job in this process is, uh, is being available, uh, being out there, uh, having high character. Even right now, you know, people talk about being prepared. One of the tough conversations that I've had with people uh, with, the small business, uh, with the small business program, now, you know, this is one of the few times during a disaster that the SBA actually loans money directly. But if you're, all, but if you're already in a serious credit situation, you know, you're, you're, you're probably not going, you're probably not going to get funded. So 
do, uh, taking that preparation and making sure that the back room of your business is is stellar and that the, and that the credit is in good order is going to be something you know your taxes all that stuff and all that all those things are important for a crazy time like this when you definitely are going to need to help um, saw a program this morning um larry mentioned uh ppp and uh, that's payroll protection uh, program and uh, they're still uh, one of the congressmen this morning said that there was a hundred and um, thirty billion dollars still left in that program but they want to target that money to the most uh, to people that were affected uh, the most and a lot of times that's that's, that's going to be small women and minority owned businesses so I would definitely go back to my bank or one of the four that Larry talked about to try and um, get an idea of um, try to get an idea of who's uh, who's um, um, making those loans and grants out there and get in, and get involved with them. Um, you know, signing up on supplier sites. Uh, you know, I, I went through some this morning just to make sure that there that I that I could say this word. It's pretty easy. You know, uh, it's pretty easy. I went through I went through a couple, and I would encourage you to uh, you know find places that you're that you're interested in. Sign up on their on their sites. Um, get your information in there, and also look at the um, the opportunities for certification. Lastly, uh, with uh, my conversation, because I think that um, uh, really what I want to do is uh, open it up for questions later. Lastly, is that um, I want to tell you about um, a pretty exciting uh, program that Lexington Fayette Urban County Government has come up with, and um, as it stands now, Commerce Lexington is negotiating with them to be the administrative arm through our access loan program uh, for this. Um, the city is going to offer, um, uh, they're gonna have $2.5 million of grants to small businesses. They are looking at, um, looking to serve um, as many businesses as possible with grants up to $25,000. And that is, um, that is business that they have to be the businesses have to locate in Fayette County. You have to be current on all of your, all of your taxes. You, uh, you know, everything has to has to be in order. But um, and the business has to be, um, uh, and you have to be in business at least by January first. And you know that's easy. That's Secretary of State stuff. But um, those grants up to uh, twenty five thousand um, dollars. That that program is still being worked. The, the mechanics are still being worked out, but the money has been allocated. And here's the good news, 1.25 million, half of that money is gonna to go to women and minority owned businesses. And I'm just saying to people here, if your business is located in Fayette County, if you were harmed in any way, or if you put um, expenses, whether you had to do safety, um, where you had to uh, put up safety uh, glass or, or, or uh, bring on new employees, there are a lot of different areas, it's a pretty, um, it, it's a it's a pretty good program. Whereas you all you have to do is define where you are and how this particular grant will be able to help you maintain your business. And one of the things that we're going to be looking at, uh, if we wind up being the entity that is the um, um, the entity that administers uh, the the grants, is that we want to get them out as quick as possible. Now, quick, you know that that's a, that's relative to everyone. But uh, there's going there, there should be an application in the next three or four weeks um, that you can sign up on on the uh, L LFUCG site. That information will come to um, uh, Commerce Lexington's access loan access loan program, and we will act on it from there. And that's based on if we can work out some of the other details. But that's what we're working on right now. Uh, we were very um, heavily involved in putting uh, the information together. And I know I've just kind of scantily covered it right now, but uh, I'll summarize everything by saying that remember that you have uh, an entity at uh, Commerce Lexington that has uh, been um, uh, uh, that has uh, directed its efforts towards minority business for you know many years, and uh, we have um, not only lots of um, lots of networking and other programs uh, that are there. We have some things that that can shore up your business, and we have a lot of connections. I think that that can help small businesses. And you really ought to take a look at, um, at, at joining and, uh, and, and getting to the center of what's going on here in Lexington. So that, you know, and you know, 
Economic development is empowerment. The stronger your business is, the more powerful you are in this community. And I, I want to leave you with that and uh, turn it back over to Ray. Uh, no, Tyrone, thanks for that. that that's um, exciting news. And we, we hope that we will be the facilitator for those funds. Um, and we've worked hard to be the facilitator, so we'll see what happens. Uh, but, you know, Tyrone hit right on it. Um, there's also, just so you guys know, there will also be some funds through the Bluegrass Community Foundation. Um, they're actually working on their application process, too, and how to dish the funds out. And, but there'll be some more grants out there. Um, and, you know, I, I would advise you to take, take advantage of grant opportunities and fill out applications. Uh, I mean, after all, um, it's less complicated then PPP and EIDL and um, you don't have to pay it back. That's the best part. <laughs> so uh, there you go. That's so one. <laughs> take advantage of it as much as you can. So be on the lookout for that. Like anything else, you want to be in the front of that, not behind it. So uh, a lot of good things were said on this web chat. Uh, Tyrone didn't fill you guys in. We, we're going to be more intentional about highlighting minority businesses going forward. Uh, on a monthly basis. Uh, and so we have our marketing communications guru is on this call and he, he is going to help us make sure that Mark Turner, that we, we do a better job of uh, highlighting minority businesses. Um, but where we need to help is uh, we need your help because this is relationship building 101. I've been a member of Commerce Lex and I landed here 12 years ago. I've been a member of Commerce Lex from day one when I hit the ground. And it has enhanced and helped my businesses along the way at every turn. But you, you're building a relationship along the way. Uh, and that's and you're having your voice heard. So uh, the other takeaway for me is that we, we need you guys to understand that you are the largest segment and the most important segment of business in this country. Small business drives the economy uh, in America. And we have to understand the empowerment that you have. You're not beholden to anybody. You don't work for anybody. You, you, can, you can have your own message, your own, your own strategic plan, whatever you want. And that's power in that. Because I believe what's helped me along the way is I've never been tied to any organization or any company. I've been allowed to say or do freely what I want to do. Uh, and that's, that's empowerment. That's, that's empowering. We need that same empowerment across the board in, in, our, in our county. So I will continue to encourage you guys to join um, Commerce Lex, as Tyrone said, to join boards and commissions. Um, every year the city and the state opens up to the community for folks to sign up uh, if they wanna make themselves available to boards and commissions, do that. We Business owners need to be heard, in Lexington especially. We do not have as strong a voice in this community as you guys think we do. And that's because not enough of us are getting involved in making sure that conversations are being had that are pro business and business friendly. So it's hard for a lot of us to stand up here and shout down this hallway. We need everybody involved and everybody to stay in touch. I wanted to touch on a couple of things before we get off from, from our panelists to make sure we, we covered everything that we wanted to cover. So uh, we, we talked about with Martina, we talked about what I would call the interfacing of your business. Uh, who is the face of your business? And, and if you're not going to be the face of it, what is the presentation that you're going to put out there in the community about your business? And I want to make sure that you guys, Martina, you want to plug your site again and make sure we hit a home run with that. While this is being recorded and you can pull this out at any time, because I know somebody wanted to get the um, information on the um, SBDC stuff that Tyrone shared. Um, but while we're here, we want to go ahead and plug what we need to plug. So Martina, go ahead and Talk about your organization one more time so people have access to it. They know what the name of it is and so on and so forth. Yes, yeah, so it's the sitinproductions.com. Like the sit-in, it's based off of the civil rights movement. That's what the name is. Um, my grandfather, James R. Mapp, was a big component in that as well with a lot of my family. So just wanted to progress and move the needle forward. Uh, on the website, it is linked at the bottom to all my social media pages. So you're able to follow there. So the sit-in productions, and we have a talk show that's on the site as well. We highlight a lot of um, great people, especially Black women in this community. Okay, thanks for that. And then, you know, Larry spoke a lot about banking, banking relationships. Um, 
and, and Tyrone talked about the accelerator program and, and this large group of people that we have uh, of banks that are that are really interconnected uh, for financing minority businesses. Um, it's the best program that you'll ever see for the city this size. Um, and, you know, we have won awards uh, around centered around this program. And yet we still have a hard time getting more people to participate in this program. So I would, Tyrone, plug the accelerator program, accelerator loan program, plug that one more time so people understand what that is. Most definitely. The Minority Business um, Accelerator Program is uh, businesses. We, we created a program um, sort of um, uh, replicating it out of a Cincinnati um, program. It's been around for a long time. But what we did was we looked at Central Kentucky and the businesses that uh, that we have here. And we wanted a company to have at least $250,000 in revenue and be scalable. Scalable to work with large entities and grow. Uh, scalable to bring on professional employees. And um, that has, like I said, that has, um, that has slowly um, been doing very well. And last year uh, was a banner year. And, and I think that what you, you really have to you really have to understand it when uh, anybody at Commerce Lexington is standing up and saying, um, you know, our accelerator, you know, with minority business had X, it's always ethnic minority businesses. And I think that that's a that's really that's really important, uh, especially in a climate like this and uh, and any climate, really. I mean, uh, you know, you got to figure uh, the entities before I got here understood that, um, you know, this program had to had to be here and uh, was, had to be available to, for growth and sustainability of uh, ethnic minority businesses. So the accelerator is sort of the cream of the, uh, of the crop of what we're doing. Um, I think, my, I think uh, my best volunteers, I have 27 lenders that I'm, uh, that I'm affiliated with, and I think that they would be upset if I didn't mention the Access Loan Program one more time, because these are people that come together volunteer. I wear Larry and um, a, a small group of people out and um, during the year. And then what we do is that we have a two-tiered program that, uh, that helps you get to a loan. And once you get to the full committee, you make it a presentation before that, uh, before that committee, we've maintained a 97% approval rating. And so we've done everything that, uh, that we can. And so instead of you running around, you know, the different banks, come uh, Come through the access loan program and, um, and 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 go through that process because it's a it's a, it's not just a process it's a process to get you uh, one the uh, money that you need and the funds that you need and also hopefully pair you with someone that really cares about uh, moving you forward. I now have people this year even during COVID, you know they started with the access loan program and they're going in for a second round now to on an expansion basis because they because I think they were set up right uh, um, they were set up properly in the beginning so uh, the minority business accelerator boy you know when you when you look at um, you know um, equity solutions and and what they've done uh, I, I I couldn't I couldn't do it by myself I mean we are I mean that I mean that I mean uh, you know Ray and his group have really um, uh, grown these businesses and put them in front of people um and and got millions of dollars into in a business pocket so all i could say about that is that uh you know you've got to have a lot of partners you got to have a lot of relationships and the only way to do it and especially in a small town like this is get out there and uh and be known and um and i think you'll find that people really want to do business with you yeah Thanks. i want i want everybody i, I want to leave everybody with the final thought that the commerce lexington is an advocate for you and your business at all times um if you look at how we responded to both of these crises. Go to our website and look at the response that we've had. It's been all about aiding and helping businesses of all sizes. We have had all kinds of supports uh, on our site. We've had all kinds of web chats and series. Um, we're selling PPE. That was geared, the PPE idea was geared toward making sure smaller minority companies and businesses had a place to go to buy moderately priced PPE products for their business. And that's on our site as well. Um, we've got legal advice, from Jackson Kelly, linked to through our site as well. So we've tried to be very intentional about the supports. Our goal at the end of the day is to make sure everybody's business remains healthy and everybody's still in business through 2020. 
Um, and, you know, that goal is stated for us. Uh, we want to continue to be a support. Uh, we want to continue to make sure that you guys feel comfortable with us, contacting us, contacting our support team with the things that you need to be or be have access to to be successful. So we'll continue to share the things that are available. Uh, we'll continue to highlight minority companies and businesses. I want to thank Tyrone for his time. Tyrone, you got one more thing you want to? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm sorry, Ray. I, I, I hated to break in, but I just wanted to say, I think that if you want to know how intentional we have been to uh, assist small businesses in the area, I think our startup guide on the Commerce Lexa website it can be accessed by anyone. And so that'll give every business an opportunity. We keep that updated so that you know what the current issues are which start with opening your doors again for your business. You know, right now we're at 50%, but uh, as that goes, that startup guy is gonna, gonna be there. And I think that's still open to the, uh, to the general. It is, it is. Uh, thanks, thanks for adding that up. No, I meant no to problem. mention that earlier that we got a startup guy on our site too. So okay. we wanna make sure that you continue to have access to us uh, and that you have all the tools to be successful. I wanna thank Tyrone, Martina and Larry for their time today. I wanna appreciate you guys for what you do on a daily basis. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's very important. The fabric of our community is going to, is going to really be dictated on how well our small businesses do. Um, and so, you know, we are intentionally committed to that. So I want to thank everybody. I hope everybody has a great week and a great weekend and a great 4th of July. And thanks for attending. Thank you. Thank you.